on the Wet n Wild Coverall Foundation and Powder. And these are um, pretty new launches. They came out around the same time that the Fergie Collection came out, but these are part of just Wet n Wild's regular line. So it's a cream foundation, it says, and just a pressed powder. So I'm going to be showing you in this video my review as well as an application and talk about, you know, how this goes on, the staying power, and that sort of thing. Shade names and stuff like that seem a little bit funky because I am light in the foundation and medium in the powder and the powder even though it's named medium seems even just a little bit lighter than that foundation so basically the foundation runs dark that's something to be aware so of. This is being labeled a cream foundation and I think that's pretty accurate it's a little bit thicker than a lot of the liquid foundations that are out there now um, like Revlon Colorstay, Revlon Nearly Naked, L'Oreal Lumi, um, L'Oreal True Match just some of those different kinds that are liquid foundations are very liquidy. This has a little bit thicker texture and it still it seems to provide pretty much medium coverage. As you see the application, you'll see it's going to even out the skin tone as a whole, but it's not quite full coverage to the point that it takes care of things without the need, without needing a concealer to come in. As far as the finish on this foundation, I mean, when you put it on, it doesn't seem to be like glowy or shimmery. It has no shimmer or anything like that in it, but it doesn't seem to be like super, super matte like some foundations are. Um, it has kind of just a natural finish, so I like that. Um, the powder is a pressed powder and it doesn't have a mirror anywhere in the compact. Just always like to point that out because um, that, that's a handy thing to have on the go. It does come with a sponge and here's your powder. The powder actually has quite a nice feel to it. It's maybe not quite um, the quality level that I see in L'Oreal True Match or that Revlon Nearly Naked powder. Those are a couple of my favorites from the drugstore right now. Yeah. It still um, seems to pack a little bit of coverage. So when you put it on on top of the foundation, you do notice just that just slightly enhanced coverage level. And once you do apply this on top of the foundation, you do look totally matte. So I think a really oily skinned person might see that finished look right after applying the makeup and be like, okay, I'm totally matte. You know, I'm set for the day. I'm not going to have any problems with this. The issue starts to come up in how this wears during the day because this is a little bit thicker foundation. It has just, I feel like, a little more moisture content to it than a lot of the other foundations. And for a dry skin person, I think that's great. You know, if you feel like your your look starts to look extra cakey or dry or cracked kind of seeming throughout the day, um, this is something that might, you know, give a little bit of hydration back to the skin. But if you're oily, you know, it's going to have that matte appearance once you get done applying these two, but as the day goes on, um, for me as like a combination skin person who is closer to the normal side of things during winter time, even dry in some places, I still get a little oily in the T-zone with this. Um, it's not it's not major, and I know I mentioned that a lot with foundations. Oh, I needed to touch up a little bit with powder later in the day. I didn't have a huge issue with this, but I did have a little bit of oil in the nose and forehead area. It wasn't to the point of like breaking down the product. I didn't feel like, you know, the foundation totally disappeared or anything to that extent, but I did get a little bit oily and I think that's just a reflection of what my skin type is. I would love to hear from a dry skin person who's tried this because I have a feeling it would perform better at least in the staying power department for them. So I want to take you through the application. Um, I just kind of dotted this all over my face. I could sense you know just the little bit thicker texture that this foundation has so I put it all over and I blended it out with my Sigma F80 brush. I feel like that just gives a really nice even um, application to the foundation and and then I did go in with my CoverGirl Plus Olay Concealer Balm just on those areas where I felt like I needed a little extra coverage. You can see my skin tone is really evened out with this foundation, but it does leave a, you know some areas where you still need the concealer. Then I went in with the CoverAll Pressed Powder, and the main effect that I see from this, you know, a little bit enhanced coverage, but a really, really matte finish. And um, like I said, how long will it stay matte? I think that's really dependent on your skin type. If you're an incredibly oily person, um, expect sort of a breakdown in this foundation throughout the day. If you're about like me, you're somewhere in the middle, a little bit more towards normal, but do have, you know, that combination issue sometimes around the T-zone, um, be prepared for a touch-up. I think a touch-up of the powder or of, you know, whatever powder you prefer to use um, will pretty much solve that problem. And if you're dry, I think this could be, you know, a good foundation to try for your skin type. I can't guarantee that. I'm just me here. But if you do want 
to try this. I think it's definitely not the financial risk that a lot of the foundations in the drugstore would pose. I mean, I'm noticing prices getting upwards of 11 and $12 for drugstore foundations, if not more sometimes. And these are under $5. I mean, I think the powder is just like uh, maybe around three dollars and the foundation perhaps three to four dollars depends on where you shop. Overall pleasantly surprised with the quality of this foundation and powder. If you've tried them I'd love to hear what you think and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.